Um, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Professor Charles Hume from the University of Education. I'm a professor of psychology and education uh, uh, at Oxford, and my principal research interests are in uh, children's language and reading development and disorders thereof. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be invited to give this lecture to ACAM uh, in your online series uh, and I'm going to be talking today about identifying and remediating children's language difficulties. Uh, before I start, I should say that the work I'm going to be talking about today centres around two aspects of our recent research. First, looking at the effectiveness of a programme for uh, remediating language difficulties, which is referred to as the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme. This is a programme that I developed with colleagues uh, over many years in a number of different universities, including the University of York and, the, and University College London, as well as in Oxford. Uh, and I'm also going to be talking about a newly developed test that we've uh, developed in Oxford um, called Language Screen. And I've put up here a, a conflict of interest statement just to record the fact uh, of my interest in these two products. So I'm going to start with a summary, really, of the main things I want to get over today. Uh, the first is that we need to recognise the critical role of oral language skills for many aspects of, inter of development and education. I'm going to concentrate particularly on evidence about our ability to intervene to improve oral language skills and show you evidence that such interventions can be highly effective. I'll also um, show you evidence that such interventions can be delivered effectively in mainstream school settings by teaching assistants who've been given appropriate materials and training. And I'm going to argue that improving oral language skills is important in its own right but also has uh, important transfers to other educationally relevant um, outcomes, including literacy and some wider aspects of educational attainment. So let's start by thinking about the relationship between language and education. Language is critical for education in so many ways. First of all, language is typically the medium of instruction. So, for example, in this lecture, I'm talking to you, you're listening to what I'm saying, you're understanding me, I hope I'm imparting some useful knowledge to you. This all depends upon our language skills and our verbal interaction. Literacy, reading and writing are critically dependent on a foundation in all language skills, as are numeracy skills. In addition, we need to be aware of the fact that language skills are critical for many aspects of the social and emotional development. Children need to be able to communicate, to make friends, to join in, in activities and to express their feelings. And there's good evidence, I think, that language difficulties are often associated with problems in behavioural adjustment in school. I'm going to be talking about that a little bit later. And some people think, although maybe the evidence for this is not overwhelmingly strong, that language may have a causal effect on uh, children's ability to regulate their behaviour by using so-called self-talk or in a speech. So all of these ideas, I think, suggest that interventions that target oral language skills have the potential for improving children's educational outcomes and more broadly improving their psychosocial well-being. If we turn to DSM-5 briefly, um, DSM-5 uh, has a subcategory of communication disorders and in that subcategory 
that talks about these disorders being highly heritable and frequently comorbid with other disorders and being associated with um, adverse effects on well-being and mental health. When we talk about communication disorders um, or language disorders more broadly, I think it's important to make a broad distinction between language and speech difficulties. I'm going to be talking today about language difficulties and many of the children we are going to be talking about in DSM-5 terms would qualify for a diagnosis of developmental language disorder. Uh, developmental language disorder refers to persistent deficits in receptive and or expressive language skills. Now, language is different from speech. Speech refers to the systems responsible for our ability to articulate, uh, to produce the sounds of speech. And many children have speech disorders. Uh, this is sometimes called speech sound disorders, speech sound disorder. Such speech difficulties are often associated with language difficulties, but they are also separable from language difficulties. So many children with language disorder don't have a speech problem. However, many children with a speech disorder may also have a language disorder, but I'm really talking about language disorders today rather than speech disorders. Okay, if we talk about language difficulties, reasonable estimates are that somewhere between seven and 10% of children have significant language difficulties. It's important to emphasize that these difficulties are heterogeneous. Uh, these problems of language development can affect both comprehension and production or receptive and expressive language skills. They may co-occur with speech difficulties, but that co-occurrence is by no means um, total. Uh, they may often be associated with a medical condition such as Down syndrome or autism spectrum disorder. They may, but don't necessarily co-occur with social pragmatic difficulties. And I think an important point to make is that we know that language difficulties are strongly associated with social disadvantage. This all leads to me saying that there's a prima case, the prima, there is a prima facie case for improving language skills early in education, uh, in children's educational careers. And this is, I think, potentially a powerful way of trying to reduce social inequalities in educational outcomes. When we consider language difficulties, um, it's clear that they become evident quite early. Uh, children with language difficulties might show a range of um, symptoms, which would include slow development of vocabulary knowledge, poor sentence formation, uh, perhaps particular difficulties with narrative skills. These are the skills involved in producing coherent language to convey your ideas, the, the ability to tell a story or to understand the story in a sensible order, and possibly a uh, limited ability to listen to and understand uh, spoken language. As I've said, this distinction between speech and language is important. And I think it's probably fair to say that children with speech difficulties are often much better recognized in schools and will more frequently be referred to speech and language therapy interventions than children with pure language difficulties, which are more of a hidden disability. Um, Children with language difficulties probably most often come to child services if they develop secondary behavioural problems, which as I've already alluded to, are quite commonly associated with language difficulties. Anyway, in our view, language difficulties should be addressed in the early years, um, perhaps in nursery, preschool and in the early school years. 
but I think an important factor that our um, research highlights is that teachers are not trained to identify language problems. They really lack the materials with which to do so. And they also lack training often in the best ways of facilitating or remediating uh, language, facilitating language development or remediating language difficulties. And it's these two things I'm going to be talking to you about today. In terms of the identification of children with language difficulties, we recently developed a tool called Language Screen, which is an app running on a tablet or indeed on a phone. Uh, language Screen assesses children's language abilities, their speaking and listening skills. And in this test, we use four different subtests, a measure of expressive vocabulary, that's simply a number of pictures that children can name correctly, a measure of receptive vocabulary, uh, which is a child's ability to match a picture of out of four to, to a spoken word. A measure called listening comprehension, where the child listens to three short age appropriate stories and then answers questions about the content of those stories. And finally, a measure called sentence repetition, which involves children hearing a sequence of spoken sentences and simply repeating them verbatim. This seems perhaps a slightly odd test, but it's a test that's known to be highly sensitive to children's grammatical difficulties. Um, and the test uh, language screen is suitable for identifying children with language difficulties between roughly the age of three and a half and eight years of age. So we've designed language screen to be used by school staff. So it fills an important gap in providing schools with a tool with which to identify language difficulties. Because this test is automated and scoring is automated, it um, reduces uh, or eliminates variations in test administration and scoring. And uh, the test generates automated reports uh, giving the details of the language profile of each child that's been tested. We've used language screens successfully in a recent large scale randomised trial to measure the effectiveness of all language intervention developed at scale. And I'm going to describe that trial in a few minutes. And language screen in that trial formed the basis on which children were identified as requiring language intervention. So here's a little bit of statistical detail. Um, the four separate tests of uh, language ability contained in language screen all correlate together quite highly and they uh, can be used in a statistical model to define a latent language ability um, factor. Um, the substantial and uniform factor loadings here support the idea that language here is being measured as a, as a unitary construct, a bit like IQ or general ability. Okay, um, another important issue about language screen is to identify whether it uh, works well in terms of correlating with well standardized measures of language ability. In the large trial I'm going to describe to you, um, we uh, had speech and language therapists spend approximately half an hour doing individual language assessments with the children we identified as having language difficulties based on language screen. And strikingly, the correlation between the individually administered tests of language ability given by the speech and language therapists and the language screen test, which was administered by untrained school staff, was startlingly high at 0.95. So this is an almost perfect correlation between the language screen app scores and the scores from individually administered uh, tests given by speech and language therapists. So this is, I think, important uh, evidence of the validity of language screen as a measure of language ability. 
So in terms of its psychometric properties, language screen was validated against tests from the health, as I've just described. Uh, the correlations, the individual correlations are all high. And in terms of the reliability of the language screen test, all the individual tests have reliability coefficients in excess of 0.9 and the total score from the test has a very high reliability of 0.97. So just to summarise, language screen gives teachers an easy automated way of assessing children's language skills. It's a highly reliable test and it's a test that correlates highly with standardised individually administered tests of language ability. Okay, um, I'm going on now to talk about interventions to improve all language skills. And in particular, I'm going to tell you evidence uh, for the effectiveness of a language intervention program that we've developed over many years, going back to the early 2000s. Um, this is a program called the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Program. The program has uh, quite recently been published by Oxford University Press. Um, what is the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Program or NELI? It's essentially a 20 week program of intervention for children in reception classes. Um, each week, uh, I should say this is uh, this is an intervention program um, is delivered by specially trained teaching assistants working in schools and each week uh, the children identified as requiring this program receive two half hour group sessions delivered by the teaching assistant and two 15 minute individual sessions and the core of this program focuses on the development of narrative vocabulary and listening skills what do I mean by that? Narrative skills are the ability to express ideas in coherent spoken language. Um, vocabulary refers to children's understanding of words in, in, in their language. And listening skills are the ability to focus, to concentrate and to process uh, coherent language and extract meaning from it. Um, these core elements of the program continue then in uh, over two terms in, in the reception class and in the second term of the program we also add in some work on letter sound knowledge and phonological awareness because we know those are critical foundations for the development of children's uh, reading skills. We have now got robust evidence for the effectiveness of uh, various versions of this Nuffield Early Language Intervention Program. Um, the first study we did was published in 2008 in the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry. Fairly small scale study compared to the study I'm going to describe to you shortly. Uh, but in that um, study, we showed that um, the Nelly language intervention program compared to an, another program which involved delivering structured reading intervention produced improvements in all language skills with a standardized mean difference or Cohen's D effect size of about 0.3, which is a moderate sized effect. In a subsequent uh, larger scale study, uh, with an untreated control group published in 2013, we found larger effects, um, standardized effects, the standardized mean differences of about 0.8, uh, and we found that those effects persisted at least six months after the intervention had been delivered. And finally, uh, in a scaled up version of the Nelly program de uh, delivered, uh, uh, published in a, in a randomized trial, 
uh, that we described in the Journal of Child Psychology and Psychiatry in 2017. Um, again, we found evidence of the programme's effectiveness with effect sizes of about uh, 0.3 uh, for a 30-week version of the programme and about 0.21 for a 20-week uh, version of the programme. The smaller effect sizes here compared to the 2013 study probably reflect um, lower levels of fidelity or treatment uh, compliance in this study compared to the earlier study. We've now just completed what I believe is the largest randomized controlled trial evaluating uh, language intervention ever conducted. This was an effectiveness trial to look at the effects of the published version of the 20-week Nuffield Early Language Intervention Program. Here we partnered with an organization called LCLAN, which is an independent organization with a national network of training staff. Um, these staff delivered training to uh, school staff uh, working with Nelly. So in this study, which is not yet published, um, we conducted a cluster randomized trial in 193 schools. We screened almost 6,000 children using language screen, uh, which was administered by school staff. And then we conducted more detailed assessments with approximately the 20, the lowest 20% of the children in terms of their scores on language screen. The average percentile rank of those children we identified as requiring help in this study varied between roughly the 10th and the 15th percentile. Um, and in the study, schools were randomly assigned to either receive uh, the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme or simply to wait and be given the programme a year later. So that was a business as usual control group. Here, are, uh, here is um, a structural equation model which summarises the main effects from this trial. We define the latent variable at pre-test and post-test, which, which you can think of as a measure of the overall level of language skill shown by the children uh, based on four different measures, individually administered measures of language ability, the KELP expressive vocabulary scale, the KELP recalling sentences subtest, and two measures from a test called the action picture test, which involves children um, seeing pictures and being asked to describe them to the examiner and their responses are scored for the amount of information in the picture that the child uh, conveys and also the grammaticality of their utterances on the test. What you can see here are two main effects. First of all, we get a clear unidimensional language factor at pre-test and post-test. We also find that that uh, language latent variable shows very substantial stability. So if you've got good language skills to begin with, you tend to have good language skills uh, later as well. But the most important finding here is that we find a clear intervention effect with a standardized mean difference in language skills at the end of this intervention uh, of 0.26. So we've got an effect size of 0.26. The, the children in the intervention group here have language skills which are 0.26 of a standard deviation better than the children in the control group. As I've already said, we use language screen to do, um, identify the children in this study. And we also use language screen at the end of the study. This was a secondary outcome measure. Here's an equivalent diagram of the results from the language screen test. Once again, this measure shows very high stability, which is indicating that it's highly reliable. And once again, we get evidence of a clear intervention effect. Here, an intervention effect of 0.32 of a standard deviation rather than 0.26. I wouldn't make too much of the difference between the size of these two effects, 0.26 and 0.32. 
I would say overall, in this very large scale study, we have evidence of an intervention effect, an improvement in language skills, which is somewhere around 0.3 of the standard deviation improvement uh, over the six months that the program was uh, delivered. Uh, there are a few additional findings from this uh, study. Roughly 34% of the children in the study came from homes where English was an additional language and children from EAL families showed identical benefits from the intervention as non-EAL children. There was actually a very slight tendency for the EAL children to show more benefit, but it wasn't statistically significant. Boys and girls showed identical, identical benefits from the intervention. Um, and there were also very small beneficial effects of intervention on a measure of children's reading ability at the end of the study. As I've already said, language difficulties are frequently associated with behaviour difficulties in school. Um, previous evidence shows significant negative correlations between language skills and later behaviour. And we know that children with language impairments are uh, somewhere around twice as likely to show uh, externalising behaviour problems and slightly less, but still substantially increased in, um, uh, they're roughly 2.26 times more likely to exhibit externalizing behavior problems and roughly 1.84 times more likely to present uh, internalizing behaviors such as depression or anxiety. Um, children with better language skills also appear to form better relationships with their teachers in the early school years um, and there's also evidence for an association between language skills, particularly vocabulary skills and their self-regulation skills. So based on that, in the uh, latest trial evaluating the effectiveness of the Nelly intervention, we looked at behavioural adjustment by getting teachers to complete sub a subscale from the brief early skills and support index, which we call BESI. Um, this is a um, questionnaire measure developed and validated at the University of Cambridge. So example items on this questionnaire are things like, is the child good at waiting patiently when this is required? Does the child have tenter tantrums? Is the child good at calming down when asked to do so? Does the child get easily frustrated? Does the child have problems uh, sitting, skill, sitting still? Strikingly, we found that the intervention, the language intervention, was associated with improvements on this measure with uh, uh, a, a, an effect size of 0.25. Children who'd received language intervention showed improvements in behaviour regulation uh, of 0.25 of a standard deviation. Rather, in some rather more complicated analyses, we showed that these effects were not mediated or not accounted for by the size of the improvements in language skills. So it appears that these improvements in children's uh, language, uh, uh, sorry, the size of these improvements in children's um, behavioural adjustment scores are the direct effects of the structured teaching they're having. If you think about it in the intervention, children are spending time in small groups and individually with teaching assistants. And one of the things the teaching assistants are doing is kind of regulating their behavior, telling the children to attend, or telling the children to speak at appropriate times. And these high quality, highly structured interactions we believe seem to have a di direct effect in improving these children's uh, behaviour uh, regulation. So just to summarise, um, the Nuffield Early Language Intervention is a 20-week uh, language intervention programme uh, designed for use with children in reception class. 
roughly for children between four and a half and five and a half years of age. The programme works on a withdrawal model. Schools identify the children with the poorest language skills in each classroom to receive the intervention. The programme is a fully scripted programme and it's delivered by teaching assess assistants. Um, the teaching assistants do two half hour sessions each week with small groups, typically five or six children at a time, and two 15 minute individual sessions with one child at a time uh, where um, the, the language skills are taught. We believe that the Nuffield Early Language Intervention currently has the strongest evidence base of any language intervention programme. And the evidence I've shown you, I think, shows quite clearly that the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme produces education meaningful improvements in children's oral language skills, as well as producing improvements in, in teachers' ratings of the children's behavioural adjustment. It might not be too surprising, I suppose, that the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme, which directly targets language skills, improves those skills. I think it's quite striking that the programme also uh, results in substantial improvements in teachers' ratings of children's behavioural adjustment in school. So, in summary, we think the findings from this latest and very large-scale randomised trial provide very good evidence that this programme is effective in both improving children's language skills and improving their behavioural adjustment. So just to draw some conclusions, um, we believe there is an unmet, an unmet need for language intervention in UK schools and indeed in schools uh, in many other parts of the world as well. We believe it's really important that oral language skills are put uh, to the fore and that they are fostered in the early years of a child's educational uh, experience. Improving children's language skills really provides a solid foundation for almost everything else that will occur in formal, uh, formal education. The school-based oral language interventions we have shown can be successfully delivered by uh, suitably trained and supported teaching assistants. Uh, we've also found uh, in some of the studies I've described very briefly earlier that these improvements in oral language and, uh, skills also have positive effects on children's literacy skills. Um, and we believe that the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Programme now has really the best evidence base of any currently available programme for improving uh, children's language skills. And we also believe that the results from that study provide very good evidence that this language screen measure can enable school staff to assess language skills accurately and can be very useful in helping to make school staff aware of the unmet needs for language intervention uh, in schools. Um, we're currently extending this work. Um, we're currently working to develop uh, a new programme for use in nursery schools. This is referred to as the Nuffield Early Language Intervention Nursery Programme. This programme consists of a whole class programme uh, of language enrichment for all children in uh, a nursery classroom. The programme is based around a set of pre-reading books uh, and as in the Nelly Reception class programme, children with the weakest language skills in each of the nursery classrooms are identified and get additional small group and individual sessions to give their language skills a boost, again uh, delivered by specially trained uh, nursery staff. And once again, this program focuses on teaching vocabulary, listening and narrative skills. Um, we are currently, well, we are, we were in the middle of a, 
conducting cluster randomized trial of this program, which unfortunately has been interrupted due to the COVID pandemic. Um, the program was running in uh, some 60 nurseries, um, but after only about six weeks of program delivery, we had to leave uh, the, 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 the schools closed. And uh, so that trial, we're hoping that we will get funding to restart this trial, uh, but that won't be until uh, next year at the earliest. So just to draw out some uh, implications for policy, um, we're in the process of making language screen available nationally uh, to schools in the UK. Uh, we're hoping to get funding for the rollout of Nelly uh, and language screen and to use that, those rollout activities to gather, gather further evidence for uh, effectiveness. And I think important remaining questions include the need to establish whether interventions such as Nelly have uh, long-term effects. Are these effects maintained? Um, we also need to look more broadly at whether the interventions have effects on school attainment, particularly uh, progress in uh, reading, literacy, skill, literacy skills and numeracy skills, and also to establish the usefulness of language screen as a tool for monitoring language development over the first uh, three or four years of a child's life. Okay, uh, that's all I've got to say to you. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this lecture clear and um, interesting, and I hope I've managed to convey to you what I see as the critical importance of language skills for education and behavioural adjustment, and also the fact that there are available useful tools for identifying language skills and also useful materials available to actually do something about improving language skills for children who have language difficulties. Um, thank you very much for listening.